Hey, hello! If you're here, you're probably wondering how to learn to read a picture pattern. This is one of the ones, this is from a pattern that I made a couple weeks ago. And it's done. So if you want to look at the back of it, and I'm going to show you how to do that. To read this, I'm going to bring it a little closer to here. You see how each of them are an individual stitch and an individual block. So you're going to start out with your base of 32. This is now the top of your pattern, and you're going to read right to left each time coming as you come down and finish here at your new bottom. So it's all squares and grids. So with your pencil, what you want to probably do is write out how many per for the first two rows so you can get a good foundation and you can center your pattern correctly. For that first one. So you see how I've written it all into the little squares. So I can just count it up. I really do get lost. And that just makes it easier. So now, I'm going to go ahead and start this first one for you. So I can, I can show you how the how to s change colors correctly. Because I know this is probably confusing as heck. As to why this translates to this. <laughs> So like with our pattern here, we're going to start with our green. We're going to be using a G hook. If it'll focus. No, it won't. This is a G hook. And we're going to go ahead and chain our first 32 and then do our first row of solid green. So we're going to So there's our basic chain of 32 with our G hook. And then we're going to do the first row, which is all green. Okay, so we finished our first row of the pattern, this first green row. So what we're going to do now is take our pencil and just scribble over it. So we know we've done that row and we're on to the second one because goodness knows you will get lost. It's okay, we're only human. And I recommend doing this with a pencil because pen you cannot erase. So there you go. So now you know you've done your first green row and you're on to your changing colors. So this second row incorporates this technique as well as the whole one less stitch than the color is, but I'll just show you guys that so it's not too confusing. Alright, so got the first row here coming from this side. So I'm going to look at, my, at how I numbered them again. And I have 10 green, and then 11 white, and then 11 green. So I'm going to pick up my thing again, remembering how many is per. So I'm coming this way on the pattern for this next row. I'm going to pick it up again and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, I've only worked in nine stitches on this next one. Now I'm going to choose which side is my back. If I leave my if I leave my yarn this way, this is now my back. If I leave my yarn this way, this is now my back. So I'm going to leave my yarn this way. I've done nine, so I'm, now I'm going to pick up the white. And it's fallen off the table. Great. I'm going to pick up the white. I'm just going to do another slip knot. and tie it onto my hook. Hang on. So I've just tightened it onto my hook with slip knot. This is my back, so these both are gonna go these are both are gonna go towards the back. And now I've got my 
white in my hand and I'm just going to move it over so that the green is hanging and then I'm going to just make another double knot and there is my tenth green stitch right there and then I'm going to move on to my white now instead I have 11 white according to my pattern so I'm going to go the next work in the next 10 and let it carry over so one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten my pattern's at eleven I worked in the ten I'm gonna change the green out now um, this is kind of the confusing part for some people you take your green you've left out of the pattern out of the work and you bring it over to where you're gonna pick it up again so it's stringing across make sure it's not too tight you want it kind of just to lay snugly across the back so there's my 10 green, my 11 white, and I'm on my last 11 green. And since this is just the end of, the, of this row, I don't need to really do any counting per se. So that finishes my second row. So now I'm going to color it in with my pencil so I know where I am. And you can continue to just write in the numbers for every row if you really need to, but I find it easier to just look at where my last color was and see how many more in that row. So it looks like with this row, it's two more than the end of each of them. So you just have to remember to go out two more than your original 11. Again. And since both sides are even, it's just two on each side, we know we only have to stop a three before, so our green carries over that one extra, and we have an even two on each side. So we're going to work in our green. So we have three unworked green stitches before the 11, and we know we have to come out two, so we're going to put the green at the back again, and pick up the white one more time. Work in our last green stitch, and pick up the white and then work in those two new, those two extra stitches of white. Work back over the original, because we had that in our pattern, so now we have to come out two on this side. So we want to be sure we take those extra, that extra one, because it always carries over, and we pick up our green again. Carry over our one to the second we need it, making sure that we're not too pulling too tight, or making it too loose, just kind of lay across the back there without looping down and I kind of messed up because I let that and don't let your um, bind ins stick out like this be sure it's behind it's in the back where you've wherever, whichever way you've chosen to be in the back and then we're going to work out our last couple of green because there we've done the first three rows of our rabbit it's starting to need and starting to look a little round at the bottom, starting to take shape. And we have our couple of string overs in the back here for the green and the white. And as you continue to work through the pattern, you're going to probably, hopefully, wind up with something like this as a finished product. And for the black and the pink, it is the same method of putting the yarn colors into the into the work just like the green and the white. All in all, that is how you take this and your yarn and make a cute little bunny granny square. <laughs> well, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. If it wasn't, let me know. I'm just here to help. 